Yes guys, welcome back to the George Benson Football Channel. Welcome back to another video. Today, we've got six things that we learned from Chelsea 2, Leicester 2. It doesn't look anything like Stamford Bridge behind me. There is my favorite dog in the whole world, as well as my sister's dog, this is Chips. I'm in Bali. I know that's like a long way away from the Premier League, but we've got a break at the moment. As you can see, I've got two shiners as well from skiing last week. Bali just so happens to be a place where I know a lot of people. I've got a lot of friends here. Feeling very grateful for, for all of that. And we're gonna be making videos here for the next week or so, back on the daily uploads here on the George Benson Football Channel. I know I said that last time, but you know, I've gone 17 hours across the other side of the world. You can't buy tickets to Mars yet. So I don't think I can change my mind about where I'm gonna be and whether I'm ready to make videos again. I think this is it now. This is me in Bali for the next 10 days. And we are back. Six things that we learned. Chelsea two, Leicester two, or Leicester the two Chelsea two should we say it is one of those games where you look at it and you think well actually it's not the worst result it's against another team in the top four it's away from home there were some periods of some really nice football from Chelsea there were some good individual performances and as you can see on the screen here these are the six boxes we're going to go for but again I feel as though the overall overriding thing is that we had a lot of chances and we didn't take them but without any further ado so obviously when you're a center back and you score two goals and your team only scores two goals the man of the match award has to go to Antonio Rudiger he's been one of those center backs who everyone's thinking like oh who is the best center back at Chelsea Tamori's been dropped people are getting frustrated about that Rudiger came in and thanks to two exceptional deliveries from Mason Mount another player who's come in for bucket tons of scrutiny on Chelsea social media recently Mount's one of those players where apparently you either love him or you hate him I can't can't really entertain the hate idea right now, but some people can. Rudiger gets his head on two of them. Chelsea, two goals away from home, countless opportunities, but the headers from the big German centre-back Rudiger were absolutely key. Got us the point away from home, and I just thought he had a really, really good performance, not just with the goals, but I think he looked like our most solid centre-back in that game against Leicester. So moving into box number two, Frank Lampard made a huge decision to drop Kepa Ariza Balaga. Apparently, it's come out since the game saying that you know, the board aren't very happy that the world record fee for a goalkeeper and he's he's on the bench for Willy Caballero, who's like doing his swan song in football. Caballero comes in. Again, it's one of those things where the second choice and third choice goalkeepers at football clubs know that unless there is a massive dip in form in the number one, they're not really going to be in contention to start the big games. Willy Caballero came in and in the first half, I thought he looked all right. He made a couple of good saves. We saw a bit more confidence from Caballero, which we may not have been seeing in recent weeks from Kepa Ariza Balaga. In terms of what Willy Caballero did do, I don't think it was good enough. I don't think he was coming to claim the ball as well as he should have been. Yes, he's not as tall as Kepa. If you're gonna come in, you've gotta then make the difference when you're on the field. And I don't think Willy Caballero did enough to make the difference. So in terms of Frank's decision, not only is he gonna have ruined Kepa's confidence even more than it already was, but in terms of a vindication for the decision, I don't quite think Willie hit the bill. So box number three, we're going to have to talk about this man because again, there's been plenty of talk about should Chelsea cash in on N'Golo Kante. He's probably the player at the club right now who's worth some of the most money in the transfer market if the big teams in the world, such as your Real Madrid's, your PSG's, are looking to get out the checkbook to splash the cash. N'Golo Kante was back to his tenacious best. It's his old team. There was going to be like an added impetus for him to put in a decent performance performance but what we saw from Kante was again I use the word tenacious on the screen but the tenacity to go and try and win the ball back and when he did have the ball he was far less lackluster than what we've seen of him in recent weeks he was in the right positions we saw the best version of N'Golo Kante in that game against Leicester and I think if he wasn't at his best in a game like that when Frank Lampard dropped Kovacic from the midfield as well which I just found absolutely bizarre considering how good he's been recently Kante came in People have been saying that if anyone's going to be dropped out of that midfield, it could be or should be N'Golo Kante. But he came in and I thought he had a really, really good game. I've given him a green box because there's been a lot of times recently where it's kind of been a bit on the fence. People have started to lose faith in him. His performances have not been as good this season as we've seen in previous seasons. And in terms of that conversation starting where if Chelsea want to spend a lot of money in the summer on really improving this squad, we've seen the reluctance to spend money in the January transfer window. Maybe we might have to see Chelsea sell again in order to really splash the cash in the summer and Kante could be one of those ones to make way. 
Moving in to box number four. Now, I've given it a yellow box because we did score two goals. I've put Mason Mount in this box as kind of like a little diagonal. He did get two assists from two very good crosses of the ball. But in terms of the end product, there was something and a moment in this game that frustrated me beyond belief when hudson Adoy is about to pull the trigger with his left foot on the edge of the area. I know this was a few days ago now, but you guys know what I'm talking about. Mason Mount clearly shouts behind him, leave it. He leaves it, but the trajectory of the ball was never going anywhere near Mason and Chelsea swander an opportunity. It's not just that one, that's the example I'm giving, but we look so impotent when we're going forward at times. I think in terms of the combinations, these players may have grown up playing together, but we're not seeing it enough in the first team right now. And it is something that has been frequent throughout the entire season from Chelsea. We're creating as many chances as the best teams in this division, but we are not converting enough of them. I don't think Tammy Abraham had his best game again. There's games where he looks good, there's games where he scores, and then there's games like the one against Leicester where he did not really look like scoring at all, to be honest. I, I did kind of think the Sionku decision could have maybe been a penalty but again at the same time that's just the blue tinted glasses talking about here or the black ones with my black eyes i've given it a yellow box i thought mount's delivery was good we need to see more better deliveries in the final third we didn't do enough to win the game so it's only a yellow from me so box number five i have spoken countless times about this geezer this season he's absolutely unbelievable right now i'd go as far as to say top two right backs in the division. Now, I know there's going to be a few Liverpool fans here who are like, oh, where does Trent fit in this? Uh, he's number one. Just just saying. At this moment in time, it's going to get close, though, because Reese James is on a different planet. The, the way the guy delivers the ball into the box, it's David Beckham-esque. And if we want to start giving Trent Alexander-Arnold more plaudits, Reese James, considering how little time he's had in the first team, he's already showing that he is going to be at that level if he isn't already, in some people's opinion. Reese James was the key to Chelsea's attack. He's only got two assists in the Premier League, but he should have so many more. We're seeing it game in, game out now when Reese James is starting at right back. As an attacking outlet, he offers so much. His final delivery, the timing of the pass, the weight of the pass or the cross is as good as anyone in the Premier League right now. Reese James, I thought, was absolutely excellent. Even from a defensive standpoint, a couple of errors here and there, but he's getting better game on game, and I think he's going to be the key to Chelsea's future. We move into box number six, and I know that I'm four days late to the party for this one, but I've had about 150,000 DMs. That's actually a massive exaggeration. It's been more like a couple of hundred. A couple of tweets here and there as well. What? What Chelsea doing in the flipping transfer ban? We bring it back to the yellow box talking about impotency in attack. If we'd have spent some money this January, we could have been looking at three points in that game against Leicester, particularly in the first half. The game was there for the taking and we didn't give it to them. And I just want to know why it was that we didn't spend money. Frank Lampard in his press conferences, Frank Lampard in his interviews is coming out and saying, I wanted this. I made it clear I wanted this. What did I get? grass nothing but that reluctancy in the transfer market when you look at teams like spurs putting in the performance they did against man city yes city dominated possession they had more shots but jose Mourinho, maybe that little steam train's going to start to run a little bit now they made a sign in the geezer scores against manchester city and us chelsea fans are all sat there like we appealed the transfer ban for flipping what i know i should have made this video sooner but you guys know from my uh, erratic nature on social media right now that i haven't got round to making this video until right now now and I thought I'd incorporate it into the final box of this six things we learned video from the Leicester game at the weekend. I really hope that what we've seen so far this season where we might not be doing great in terms of the wins, the draws and the losses, but because other teams are doing awfully as well, Chelsea might just scrape it and get away with it for the second season in a row. At this moment in time, considering we didn't make signings, that's the only thing I'm hoping for. I'm hoping that Spurs' resurgence doesn't start to kick on. I'm hoping that Wolves or Sheffield United, as if we're even thinking about Sheffield United. I mean, it's credit to them, but the fact that Chelsea should be worried about teams like Wolves and Sheffield United right now just highlights how far away we are from Liverpool, who are absolutely blitzing the Premier League, running away with the title. And I mean, they may have had to wait a bloody long time for it, but when it comes, it's going to be sweeter than any other team winning it ever because of the nature in which they're doing it. And Chelsea are so far away from bridging that gap right now that it frustrates me. And I just want to know why. And we better spend money in the summer because if we start getting even further behind these big clubs when are the board ever going to back a manager enough to get Chelsea to the top of English football again teams are pulling away Chelsea need to pull their finger out as a club the board need to dip their hands in the pocket in the summer we need to look at what we've got which is already a decent foundation we need to back the manager and if Frank gets sacked oh this this channel will change dramatically from being like a place of positivity to 
I'm not even going to say it. I would be absolutely fuming. It's not going to happen. The manager needs to be backed. We need signings. They need to come in the summer. And we've just got to hope now that we can do enough, get over the line. And who knows, maybe we can even win the champ. I'm not even going to say it. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. I'm going to be doing videos probably in this garden in Bali for like the next 10 days or so. Head back to England for my granddad's funeral, which uh, never a nice thing, but obviously it's going to be nice to say goodbye to him properly. But yeah, thank you guys for all your support. I know it's been a little bit weird here on the channel since the turn of the year because I've not been uploading anywhere near as frequently. But one of my little mini goals this week is to try and at least film a new video for you guys every single day until I go back to England and then we can try and start getting back into a routine. But thank you guys for watching. I love you all. I'll see you all later. Bye-bye.